Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the Author Branding Statement Workshop. Very excited to have you here. While this is pre-recorded, there are a lot of questions that will enable you to get some work done as we go through it. Feel free to pause at any moment to do some more work if you need more thinking time. This is designed to be an interactive workshop to help you write your author branding statement. All right, let's get started on your author branding. I always like to start off my workshops with just getting to know what everybody is doing. And even though we're not live, I would love to hear from each of you and just write down on a piece of paper or type into your notes. What genre do you write? And I always ask this question and inevitably I get some people who say, oh, I just write fiction. Great. Sometimes people write what we call general fiction, but maybe you write in one of the identifiable genres today. Now, genre is generally about story expectations and people who write inside of these genres generally have a very strong idea of where they fit in the marketplace or they desire to be writing in one of these genres. It could be supernatural, thriller, mystery, drama, action, romance, and there's many kinds of romance. So that would be different subgenres of romance. Historical, same kind of thing. Lots of kinds of historical. There's horror, suspense, noir, science fiction, fantasy, and I'm probably leaving some out. And there's new genres coming along all the time. For example, I have some friends who write solar punk and some other friends who are working on something called Thrutopia. All right. So it's great to know what genre you write or what genre you're aspiring to write. Also, it's good to just take a moment and notice where you're at in your writing career. Are you published? Are you unpublished? And are you actively marketing your books? Or would you like to be actively marketing your books? A little bit about me. Thank you so much for spending time with me for this workshop. So I want to share a little bit about who I am. I am Beth Barani. I teach genre fiction writers, specifically science fiction and fantasy writers, but also romance and mystery and other kinds of people inside of these page turning genres. I teach them how to write, edit, publish, and I should have added in there market, obviously. I People market their work as well. I wear a few different hats. I'm a creativity coach. I'm an instructional teacher, also a consultant to organizations and groups. And I work also as a developmental editor inside of a mastermind program. I am also an award-winning fantasy and science fiction novelist, and I run the podcast, How to Write the Future, Tips for Fiction Writers. And it is available where you get your podcasts. And I post episodes weekly. And here's a bit more about what I write. I write magical tales of adventure, mystery, and romance. And my latest series is the Janie McAllister Mystery Series. And I have four books out in that series that are already published. I have three books out in the Henrietta the Dragon Slayer trilogy, which is young adult adventure fantasy. And then I also have five novellas that I have published that are sweet romance but all with a touch of magic and time travel and other fun things. All my work is influenced by tales and myths and legends. And also my science fiction is really influenced by what could be possibilities for humanity. A little bit more about me. I love walking in my neighborhood here in Oakland, California. I love gardening, watching movies, talking about story and traveling with my husband, who's also a thriller writer, Ezra Barani. And together we love watching movies, talking about story, traveling. So I live in Oakland, California, which is in the San Francisco Bay Area. It is unceded Ohlone territory. This is a sacred land to them. We have a piano, over a thousand books, and usually demanding sweet cats. In the photo, I have an image of our orange cat, Cinnamon, and of our striped tabby rocket, they are brothers, and there they are curled up together. I, uh, both Ezra and I, were born and raised in Northern California, and together we lived in France, Paris, France, for two years, and that was, it's hard to believe, 20 years ago. It was fabulous. We, we met 
And then the next year we got married. And then the year after that, we went to France for two years. It was fabulous. All right. Now let's turn the attention back to you. Now that you have a little bit of an idea of who I am and a little bit about where I come from. So in this workshop, I am going to cover what is author branding, why you need it, and I do believe you do, how to specifically create your author branding statement, and I will be walking you through that, and some of the uses of your author branding statement. Plus, I will address some common questions and what to do if you have more questions that I didn't address here today. I just want to start off with this fabulous quote. I love this quote by Albert Einstein. Creativity is intelligence having fun. So I hope we'll have some fun together here today. This is really a playful space, a, play, a place to experiment. This is a laboratory where you can make mistakes and try some things out. And if they don't work, you can try some other things. So something to think about, take a moment. And even if you need to pause the recording, please do journal a little bit about your thoughts and feelings, concerns and hopes, desires, wishes and dreams about your author career. I firmly believe that it is really useful to do assessments on a regular basis. And I do assessments on my author career nearly every week because things are always changing and the world is rapidly changing. So maybe what you thought you wanted last week or last month or last year is different. So take a moment to journal or free write or integrate into your morning pages practice all that you're thinking and feeling about your author career. And when you've done that, come back to this workshop. So something really important about the human attention span is when you, when something is different, it really catches our attention without even consciously being aware of it. And to represent that, I found this great quote by these authors who are really good at marketing, Chip Heath and Dan Heath. And this is from a book called Made to Stick, Why Some Ideas Survive and Others Die. So here's the quote. The most basic way to get someone's attention is this, break a pattern. So on the one hand, humans like predictability. And then on the other hand, they are attracted to what is different. So our job in our marketing, as well as in our stories, is to find a way to meld the two. And, and we'll go more into that in specifics pretty soon. So as we launch into the work of doing our marketing, I find it's really helpful to ground and also to have an open heart. And one of the ways that I personally do that is I look up at the stars. So I believe we come from the stars from a physiological, scientific perspective, but it's okay if you don't believe that. I'm very inspired by the thought that we are part of this vast universe. And I invite you to remember, remember where you came from and notice your heart and notice how you feel, however that is. And as you enter into this exercise today around book marketing, just really be present to your needs and to your desires and to make room for anything and everything that you notice, even if it's a little bit uncomfortable. That lets you know that you're on the edge of discovery. So be open to being surprised. And who knows? Who knows what will emerge? All right, let's dive in. So I always like to start marketing workshops with an assessment. And we actually already did the first one. And there's five points to this, which is to notice your thoughts and feelings about branding and marketing and your author career. And we just covered that. So now let's move on to number two. All marketing for it to feel Powerful, potent, and authentic needs to come from your values. If you want to have a lasting author career, that is. So take a moment and jot down your top five values. And then see if you can narrow that down to your top three. And then see if you can pick the top one. And this is going to go directly into our exercise around the author branding state. So I just put on the slide some examples, values, and it, there's no limit to what this could be. Family, love, integrity, fun, freedom, joy, trust. Those are just some that I wanted to give you as an example. And here's my values. When I did this exercise, basically, here's five values. Then I'll 
I picked my top three and, and I'll share with you what is the top value. So in no particular order, my values are fun, play, curiosity, compassion, embracing the unknown. So your value could also be a phrase. It doesn't have to be just one word. And if I had to pick my top three today and the shifts I notice for myself, I would say embracing the unknown, play, and compassion. And then, because I'm going to do this exercise with you, and when I teach live, I always do the exercises with you, I would say today my top value is compassion. And I, I haven't said that before. So that, that's interesting for me. That shows me I'm, I'm just leaning into that today. And that's really, it becomes like a guiding light. When we know our values and when we hone in on our top value, it becomes the filter through which we make choices. All right. Number three, state very clearly for yourself today in this moment, what are your inner and outer goals as an author? So let's put those into two categories. We have outer goal is going to be a, something that you can see that's tangible you can hold in some way. So it could be the books you write. I want to write X book or X number of books. It could be the sales you make. And while sales is not a goal that you can control, it is an, is an outcome that you can take actions toward. Awards that you win, also something that you could take actions toward. So those are examples of outer goals. Other outer goals could be things like uh, creating a book event or doing a book launch or getting on interviews for podcasts, things like that. So let's look at inner goal. What are some examples of inner goals? That is going to be something inside yourself, something non-tangible. You can create an outer representation, maybe through art, but really it's an inner experience. So with some examples of that are feelings of satisfaction, accomplishment, pleasure. So take a moment and jot down today for yourself, what is an outer goal and what is the inner goal? And this is also about the North Star. This is about what direction you're heading in. And I find it's very helpful to revisit this anytime you're doing big project inside of your author career. I call it starting from where you are. Every day things shift a little bit and it's always great to just go, oh, here's where I am today. Maybe it's different from where you were previously, or maybe it's been a running theme for you. And that's always great to just check in with yourself today. All right, now let's go to number four in the assessment, your hobbies and interests. I ask this because there's a few reasons why. Because this will help you relate to your fans and it will help you come up with content to use topics of interest that you can use in your marketing. You were first a fan and a reader before you were a writer. I can almost guarantee that. Everybody usually is. When you connect, and so the other part of this is when you connect to yourself as a fan, then you can put yourself in the position of your reader. So just make a list of your interests that are separate from your writing. So some of mine uh, I put here on this list as examples, gardening, cooking, traveling, learning French, speaking French. I have another hobby that I love to watch Star Trek and Star Wars and just about all kinds of science fiction on TV. I'm a big TV watcher. So that's another hobby and interest of mine. So take a moment and jot down your hobbies. All right. Number five in the assessment, your mindset. It's great to take a moment and recognize where, what is your mindset specifically around marketing? Because that's what we're doing here today is we're doing some preparation work for your marketing. So do you have a fixed mindset or do you have a growth mindset? And it's really great to be honest here with yourself. A fixed mindset is generally I can't change. I can't learn things. This is the way I am. This is what I was given. You know, if things don't change, I was born with these, these circumstances or this kind of environment and that's it. There's nothing I can do. Or, and so that's one end of the spectrum. And then the other end of the spectrum is the growth mindset. I can change. I can learn. Things can change and things can be different just because I was given a certain set of 
circumstances um, or how I grew up doesn't mean I'm stuck with that. I can make new choices. And it's really great to just recognize where you're at in this spectrum. And sometimes people come to marketing and it's very, they notice there's, they're in a fixed mindset because, because they are. And then they decide, oh, I want to be more open. I want to learn some new things. And it helps to have an open mind when you learn new things. Otherwise, yeah, it can be hard. All right. So now that we have done the assessment, let us move on to author branding. And I'm going to give you my definition of author branding. And I think it is a multi-layered thing. Author branding combines four elements, in my opinion. It is who you are. And it's really when we say who you are, I mean the entirety of who you are. And what you stand for, which is what we're going to talk about today. And it's related to your values. What you promise, which is your genre and the kind of books that you're offering the world. And then it is also what you deliver, that direct experience for the readers as they read your book. And that cuts its whole order, right? That has multiple parts. And today we're going to be working on one part. I also see author branding is an organic thing that grows through your relationships with your readers. It is, creates an opportunity for connections, conversations, and those relationships however you want to have them with your readers, whether it's through social media or through a newsletter or through in-person or some other way. So author branding is also this organic thing that the readers get to help you define. And that's what I have in this slide. Author branding is really something the readers may define for you because they can often see it better than you can. So I like to say that a brand is a promise of an experience. It's almost like the appetizer the smell of the appetizer before you even put it in your mouth that invites you to an experience. It is, it is that instant moment that people, when they encounter you through a book cover or through social media presence or some other way, they really are being promised something. You are promising them some kind of experience. And that's what the author statement, the author branding statement is designed to do. All right. So why do we need a brand as an author? Maybe you could skip over this and get right into the exercise. Or maybe you are also wondering, why do you need a brand as an author? And on the screen, I have an example of six different kinds of cars. We have a very fancy silver, it's not a Rolls Royce, but it's in that kind of category. We have a very practical red four-door Kia. We have a green, a lime green, like ice cream truck. We have a gray camper. We have a yellow old Porsche, and we have a very practical Ford truck, silver Ford truck. Now, different people drive these cars. They're at different price points and they do different things. And authors, we take our readers on different kinds of journeys for different reasons. And our offerings come in different flavors and shapes and colors. So a brand allows us to say what that is in a shorthand way. Other reasons why you need to brand as an author is so that readers can find you. And so they can say, oh, that's exactly what I want to read. Oh, I love stories exactly like yours. It's also so that readers know instantly what is your particular flavor. Also, it helps you promote. It helps you clarify for yourself what you, say, what you stand for. And it can help you sell books. And it can help you fulfill your purpose, as we, we touched on at the beginning, what you want for your author career. And I invite you to think about why else would you need to brand as an author? This list is not exhaustive. I'd be curious to hear what you think. And lastly, authors tell me that when they know what they stand for and they can express it easily and effort effortlessly, then they are more confident to market their books. And because they're more confident, they take action. Marketing becomes so much easier. Because when you market your books, you get that much closer to your readers you get to sell books and you get to step into your dream. You get to fulfill your dream of being an author and realizing your potential. Now, I teach this author branding statement as part of a larger class called Branding for Novelists. And an author took that class recently, Marilyn Flower. And she said to me, and she gave me this beautiful quote. She said, and she took, she took my class before she published her novel. She said, given I haven't published yet, I wasn't sure I was ready. But I now have so much information and, and ideas and some copy I've already posted on social media that I consider myself having started. 
And I really love that Marilyn was able to take the information that she learned and start marketing. So my goal is by the end of this class on author branding statement that you can go ahead and use this and start either workshopping it with your cohorts of writers or go ahead and start practicing in the real world. Really, this exercise on author branding statement is about being able to answer the question that I get all the time. Hey, Beth, what do you write? So if people don't know me, or even if people do, and I meet them in a social gathering with other writers, we're all asking each other, what do you write? So you want to be able to answer that in one sentence, because when a reader hears about it, then maybe they will want to buy your book, want to get on your list. Maybe they want to tell their friend and you make it easy for them to decide. Ultimately, when you have your author branding statement clear, then you are no longer the best kept secret that no one knows about. All right, let's dive in. Thank you for bearing with me for this introductory segment. I think it is important to lay the foundation for one's marketing so that you can know what you're doing and know why you're doing it. Okay, so this is the author branding statement. It is, there are four parts and I will walk you through each part. You're welcome to pause the recording if you need to brainstorm and write notes and answer each of the prompts that I will be giving you. And then at the very end, I'll be giving you some, actually, I'll be showing you some examples throughout so you get an idea of what we're doing. And after this part, I will talk about how do you, what are you going to do with this statement? What are some practical uses for it? There are four parts to the statement, your genre, your audience, your audience's desired result or experience. And in fiction, it's really all about experience. With nonfiction, it's more about desired result. And it ultimately, that's something that they want. What is it that the reader wants to experience? And then number four is about your intended action upon your readers. Sometimes this is implied, sometimes it's stated outright. And it goes back to what you stand for, your values. And here's an example. I write magical tales of romance, mystery, and adventure to empower girls and women to be the heroes of their own lives. Yes, this is my author branding statement that has grown over the years, and that's what I use currently. And maybe I'll revise it. It's constantly, it's been revised over the years. Let me give you some more examples, and then we're going to get to it. Just to show you all the different, some variety here. Another author wrote, I write romantic suspense novels that invite women to experience the heart-pounding rush of danger, action, and romance. My husband's statement for his books, I write suspense thrillers that thrill adults interested in Jewish themes to challenge their personal relationship with Judaism. And then another example, I write historical and contemporary romances to awaken the soul and ignite the imagination of women of all ages to realize their own potential. And one more example, I write sensual paranormal romance that inspires women to feel rapture and the power of true love. All right. Okay. So in this workshop, you want to be specific and we'll go through each one, your genre, your audience, your audience's desired result or experience, which is what they want, and your intended action upon your readers, which is about what you stand for and your values. There is a handout is a part of this workshop. And I have posted the link on the slides, and it will also be part of the material for this workshop. So take a moment to write down what is your genre. And if you can, write the subgenre. So for example, don't just write romance, say paranormal romance. Don't just say cozy. I mean, don't just say mystery, say cozy mystery. If you write science fiction, say space opera, which is a subgenre in science fiction. All right. So take a moment and write down your genre, just a one, two, three words. Try and be specific as you can. And if like what I did is I created an umbrella phrase for multiple genres, if that, if you have something like that, use it. Otherwise, just pick one of the things you write and write what that genre is. All right. And pause the recording if you need a moment to write that down. Number two, your audience. Be specific. And it helps to think in terms of adjective plus noun. So maybe it's savvy women or adventurous people or busy professionals or tech savvy moms or soccer moms or uh, young Jewish professionals, for example, or people who love cyberpunk. So pause the recording if you need a moment to jot that down. Number three, 
your audience's desired result. So here are some examples. And the big hint here is to focus on the emotion with your phrasing. So here's some examples. An out-of-this-world ex adventure. A sweet escape. A rip-roaring read. And you're welcome to take from these examples and make them your own. So pause the recording if you need to take a moment and write something down. And it doesn't have to be a write. It just needs to be an attempt. Number four is your intended action upon your readers. For this part, see if you can choose one verb. That's all you need to do is one verb. And think about your values. And often we put our values in the form of a noun. And what would be the verb associated with that? And it can be directly related to the values, the words that you chose. Maybe it's within that list of values. It doesn't have to reflect your top value, but maybe it does. And so here's some examples. Empower, inspire, motivate, transport, challenge, help, guide. These are all verbs that we're choosing here. So pick a verb that would work for, for you. A lot of writers choose inspire. I love empower. My husband loves challenge. So see if you can narrow it down to one verb. If you need to, just brainstorm a bunch of verbs that relate to your values. And then see if you can pick the top five and then the top three from that. And then from there, the top one. Pause the recording if you need some time to brainstorm this. And then come back here. We're going to put it all together. So now it is time to put all of the four pieces together. Your genre, your audience, your reader's desired experience, and your intended action upon the readers. Now, if you have come up with an author branding statement and you would like feedback from me, please go to my blog, Writer's Fun Zone, and use the link on the slide or in the handout to come on to the specific article where I share this information and post yours for feedback. The other place you can get my attention is on Twitter. And if you are willing for me to give you advice on the Twitter feed, I'm happy to do that as well. Even though it's called X now, we all know it's also Twitter. Okay, moving on. Now that you've written your author branding statement, and if we were live, we would workshop that thing together. Everyone in the room would get a chance to get feedback from me. Now what? Now what can you do with it? Well, you can shorten it to craft your ta tagline. In fact, one of my clients did that and she came up with otherworldly romances. And that came out of this author branding statement workshop. So what is in there that you could use that would communicate in a shorthand way to your readers? And I'm going to show you an, a few examples of that in a moment. The other way is to use it as the first, or in my case, I use it as a second sentence in your author bio. The third is to use it on your social media profiles and as a way to guide the kind of material that you post as an author. And of course, use it when people ask you, what do you write? In fact, I highly recommend that you play with this in your writing communities with each other and practice and then see what is it like to speak this out loud. Really, the ultimate goal of this sentence is to become part of you so that you could just answer the question. You don't have to read something. It's not a long paragraph. You won't like put your audience to sleep by telling them a blow by blow of your story. When someone asks you, what do you write? Play with answering with your author branding statement and see what happens. I invite you to experiment. So one of the common questions that I get is, can you have more than one author branding statement? And absolutely. I have tested out different statements with different audiences just a little similar, little same, my same brand. But also notice if you write two completely or three completely different genres, make an author branding statement for each one of those genres, because that might help you then if you wanted to create an umbrella brand, like what I've done, then I first created different author branding statements for each, my first for my romance, actually I started with YA fantasy, then I did the romance and now the science fiction mysteries. And I just tested it out and I saw what landed with people. And really what people remember me for isn't the magical tales of romance, mystery, and adventure. They also, they really remember me. Oh, Beth's the one who writes strong women heroines. And I am not surprised that they would remember. 
All right, let me give you an example of playing with a tagline. Really, I don't think there's a hard and fast rule here. Ask yourself, where's the power in your statement? So to revisit mine, as an example, I write magical tales of romance, mystery, and adventure to empower girls and women to be the heroes of their own lives. And as I was preparing for this workshop recently, I gave this to a live group of reader of writers. I realized, oh, there's multiple taglines here. I could I could have a tagline that's girls and women heroes, or stories about women heroes, or magical tales of romance, mystery, and adventure. That one is actually the one I use all the time. But it could be empowering girls and women to be the hero of their own lives. And then I think that what I played with on these two different, on the shield and the label, are even more shorthand ways to use a tag, to create a tagline. And then I'm going to experiment and see what it's like to share these in the real world and what kind of response I get and how I feel about it. And we'll see where it goes from there. Another way to use your author branding statement is to include it in your author bio. So here's a little bonus section for this workshop. So I want you to walk away also with the, st with the statement, but also with an outline for your author bio, because I know that is one of the most challenging things also to write as an author. So for clarity's sake, start with your author branding statement, then write about your humanity. And by humanity, do you remember when I asked you about your hobbies? This is a great place to include hobbies or where you live. Some people do a little list of their fun past jobs, something to show that you are a human being. Some people talk about their pets. That's number two. So number one is your author branding statement. Number two is your humanity. Number three, credibility as it relates to the book. Because your author bio is, this is your, when your author bio is on your book or when your author bio is on your website. And there it could relate to multiple books. So what is credibility? Have you won any awards? Do you have a degree that directly relates to your writing? You don't need to put your whole resume, just one or two things. And if you are a first-time author, maybe there's something from your past, even years ago, that, is, that can relate. And then lastly, a good bio has some kind of call to action, at least one. In fact, I would recommend just one. For more information, check out, you know, www.author.com, right? your author name, or connect with me, connect with the author on the socials, or sign up for my newsletter. Just pick one. And of course, that can, and that might change according to where you put your, your author bio. Now, just a little story about credibility. When my husband was coming out with his first novel, The Torah Codes, he didn't have any awards. It was his first novel. And because his book work has humor, he put in his bio how he is an award-winning author because he won an award for a poem he wrote in fifth grade. So, and that, and he said it in a funny way. So if humor is a part of your storytelling, then include it for sure in your bio. You want your author bio ultimately to match in tone your fiction or your nonfiction, whatever, whichever you're writing, so that readers get this combined experience of you and they aren't jarred when they go from your work to your bio. It's part of your brand. All right, everyone, that is my workshop on your author branding statement. I invite you to stay in touch with me. I have a newsletter. Sign up for the Creativity Sparks newsletter at bethbarani.com slash newsletter. And if you're curious about working together and you want to know more about the Branding for Novelists class or any of my other work, my coaching work, my editing work, consulting work, please just reach out, email me, beth at bethbarani.com. That's beth at bethbarani.com. You're welcome to connect with me on the social platforms as well. So good luck with your writing. I believe in you. I invite you to come share your author branding statement with me on the blog post or on Twitter. And happy writing, everyone. Mm -hmm.